exhibits flexibility to handle various products and capsule sizes. But in order to fill a certain size capsule, you need to use the correct size machine parts. Earlier, we referred to these machine parts as a change set. A change set is a set of parts, parts for the rectifier, the closing station, and new capsule rings that allow you to run different sizes of capsules through your machine. And you, as an operator, will probably be called upon to complete the process of putting in the correct change sets. We refer to this process as a changeover. The first step in completing a changeover is to turn the main power switch off. If you have any capsules left in your hopper, remove them. Start by changing the rectifier. Open the clear door to the rectifying assembly and remove the air hose attached to the rotation module by pressing the lock back and pulling the hose away. Lift the rotation module straight up off of the positioning pins and set it aside. Remove the two screws from the guide chute and gently pull it out. Remove the two mounting screws that hold the feed block. Pull the feed block out, being careful not to hit the retaining bar on the copper springs. To remove the rectifier block, reach in and pull the ejector rod bracket towards the front of the machine to release tension off of the shoulder bolts holding the block. Loosen the bolts and pull the block out gently. Some operators choose to do this step from the back of the machine. To insert the correct size pieces, repeat the process backwards. Start with the new rectifying block. Line up the right side rectifier blade bushing with the center of the cam. This will give you a good starting point. Slide the block around while pulling the ejector rod bracket in towards the front of the machine until you feel the mounting holes for your screws. Put the new feed block in next. Make sure your retaining bar is on top of the copper springs. Once in place, line up your screws with the holes and reattach. Set your guide chute underneath the feed block. Line up the holes and fasten your screws. Place the rotation module over the two indicator pins, reattach your hose, and close your safety door. Next, you will move to the closing station. Start by taking the lock off of the closing station. Rotate the closing ring to one side and take out the screw and washer that hold the shaft in. Pull the shaft out and the peg ring will come off. Remove the two screws that hold in the closing plate and pull it out. To insert the new size pieces into the closing station, start with your new closing plate. Slide the new closing plate into position and reattach using the same screws. Slide your new peg ring on the closing ring. Take the washer and flathead screw and hold tightly to the side as you push in the shaft and rotate until it is fairly tight inside of the ring. Put your lock position back on and turn your closing station over once to ensure everything is on correctly. Finally, make sure you change the capsule ring you are using to the appropriate size. They are all clearly marked. For an experienced operator, a changeover should take no longer than 15 minutes to complete. As an operator, there is some routine maintenance you might be expected to know. Your company will dictate all of the cleaning and maintenance protocols at your facility, but it is very likely that you will need to know how to change and clean the powder hopper. Safety is our top priority, so always turn off the main power to the machine. You will need to jack the hopper up. Do this by using a small hydraulic hand jack. Be sure that the small valve on the bottom of the jack is turned completely to the right. Adjust by using the small end of the jack handle. Begin jacking up the hopper until the top of the jack shaft reaches the bottom of the pillow block. Do not allow the jack shaft to go through the pillow block. Damage to the hopper section will occur. Take the safety guard off of the hopper. Keep one hand underneath the powder shoe and remove screws holding it. Set the shoe to the side. Loosen the thumb screws to slide off the hopper. The auger and stirring arm are now exposed and you can clean all the parts of the powder hopper assembly as specified by your organization's SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. Observe caution while cleaning the powder hopper and auger. They are extremely sharp. When you are finished cleaning, replace the hopper carefully. Tighten screws and reattach the shoe block. Be sure to reattach the shoe block tightly. 
to bring the hopper back to its regular position, bleed air off by slowly rotating the pressure valve on the jack counterclockwise until the hopper post starts to come down. Be sure to hold the hopper steady so it does not sway forward or backward while it comes down to its resting position. Bring the hopper and block down to the point where the hopper post is sitting on the Delrin spacer on the table. In addition to cleaning the hopper and auger, you might be expected to complete several other common maintenance tasks. Again, your company will dictate all cleaning and maintenance practices at your facility. To maintain your Model 10, it is vital to keep your tabletop and filling ring clean. The clearance distance between your rings and other machine components like the powder chute is oftentimes incredibly small. If you have any sort of residual product on your rings or your table, you run the chance of changing your clearances and damaging your rings or capsules. This is a costly mistake, but you can avoid it by keeping your work area free of residual product. Use a soft brush to push powder into your powder tray or use compressed air to blow powder away from your work surface. Keep the vacuum port clear of powder. You will lose your vacuum if the vacuum canister or the vacuum lines get too full of product. To ensure your vacuum lines are clear, do routine checks on your vacuum canister. To do this, open the left panel of the machine, undo the thumb screws on the vacuum canister and check the bag. If the bag is full, replace it or vacuum it out. When replacing the lid, make sure it is sealed tightly. Any leak in the seal and you will lose even more vacuum. If you don't want to take the time to check the vacuum filter, you can check the hard filter, secondary to the vacuum filter. It is a little easier to access. If there is product buildup on the hard fiber filter, you know it's time to clean out the vacuum filter. And because you will be constantly dumping bad capsules and powder into your skag drawer, you will need to clean it regularly, especially between filling different products. It can contaminate your workspace with residual product. You want to keep your filling ring clean at all times to eliminate any burrs forming on the aluminum. The most common method of getting powder out of your ring is to use compressed air. Do not bang your rings together. Repairing or replacing a damaged ring is costly. You have now learned the major components of the Model 10, terminology, general operation of the Model 10, basic changeover protocol, and some maintenance procedures. You are ready to start filling capsules. We hope you enjoy working on one of the highest performing semi-automatic capsule fillers in the industry today. Schaefer Technologies is happy to support you with your training. If you and your supervisor have any questions regarding your Model 10, don't hesitate to call us at our toll-free customer service line. This video should be used in conjunction with your Model 10 operation manual to give you a more comprehensive understanding of the Model 10 and its functions. Enjoy your Model 10 and from Schaefer Technologies, thank you.